Hey, 4HFC fans, once again, happy Canada Day. Traditional host, Louis B, and all day, we are celebrating the beautiful game and the beautiful country we call home, and I'm very pleased to be joined by 4HFC captain Kyle Becker. Uh, Bex, it's uh, been a while since you and I have uh, gotten some uh, screen time, so it's, uh, it's great to see you, buddy. How are you? I'm pretty good, man. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. First of all, happy Canada Day. Uh, this sport has... Uh, really grown kind of leaps and bounds in the last uh, few years. And um, I guess just how, how do you feel like the Canadian premier league has helped the growth of this game? And, and, and do you think we're, we're doing all we can right now? Yeah, it's, I think it's, it's massive uh, being able to introduce this and, and kind of get that first professional league in Canada is huge. Um, just the, the amount of opportunities it provides uh, provides kids. I mean, just look at the amount of players who weren't playing professional last year and getting an opportunity and, and have shown great in, in the first year. And now they're, they kind of have their foot in the door and, and people know who their name is. And it just provides all those opportunities to potentially go on and, and kickstart that career that maybe wasn't going to happen in the first place. So that's that's huge. And then I think uh, just for all the young kids coming up now to, to see something in their own backyard, kind of have something to look up to, you're working towards, you're not getting to... 15 16 17 and really unsure about what's going to happen and if you can actually make a future in this in this sport and it gives them uh gives them that jump that's kind of right in front of them and again as i said get their foot in the door and, and kick on from there yeah that's one thing uh, eddie and i were talking about a little bit earlier just the opportunity that there's probably a lot of good soccer players who who stopped playing at 17 18 because they either a, you know, just that we're a good athlete in another sport and decided to go down that road or just realize that there was no league for them. So just in terms of, you know, after college, before college, something you can do. I mean, the window of opportunity to have, you know, the, the professional teams we do now has got to be huge for any any teenager trying to make a decision on, on which way to go. Yeah, it's massive. I mean, I, if I look back and, and think about some of the players that I played with growing up that were incredibly talented, but they just never had that avenue. They didn't have that, whether it was a, a support system or they could, they just couldn't find that right fit because the fact is college isn't for everyone. Some, some people can't get into the, into the right school or, or the right fit where they're able gonna, or they're going to be able to progress and kind of keep honing their skills and, and keep developing as a player. And, and get that right balance of, of what's good for them for their future. And it's, it's tough to kind of just go blind and say, you're going to make that jump to Europe that a lot of people have had to do, especially guys in, in Eddie's gen, uh, generation, as, as you said, it's, it's tough and it's very difficult to do that. So to be able to have this and, and have that professional Avenue finally in our own backyard, it's, it's massive. I won't tell Eddie, you put him in a different generational age group. I'm sure he, he'll, he probably figures that already. So he, he already knows that, right? He already knows it, right? Uh, man's looking sprightly these days. <laughs> well, and and, and we, we kind of talked about that as well. And I was talking about this with Johnny too, just the, the idea that, I mean, you don't look at every game as an audition to the Canadian men's national team, but knowing that, you know, John Herdman has, has, sent invitations, you know, guys that play Tristan Borges, you know, make an appearance in, in Canadian friendly. That's going to be huge for, for even a guy like you to, for an opportunity to showcase what you got. And, and the fact that John Herdman's paying attention and, and that there are good players in this league who have a shot to play for the Canadian men's national team. It's massive. I mean, it, it should be a, a goal of, of every Canadian player to want to reach that highest level and play international football and, and kind of represent your country at, at one point or another. So I think the, that he's shown that he's given opportunities to guys in this league. It should just be a massive motivation for, for other players to keep going, keep kicking on and, and put their best foot forward and know that if you have that, if you have a couple of good performances, maybe you're going to get called and you're going to get into that, uh, get into a camp. And then, you're in that kind of melting pot with all those other players, right? And then you're just continually yeah. testing yourself and you always want to play in the, with the best competition and, and always challenge yourself as a player. So it's massive mo motivation for a lot of young guys in this league. Seeing the Canadian men's national team, of course, uh, you had a couple of uh, uh, caps with uh, with that team and the U23 team, and I'm sure uh, before that as well. What, what are some of your favorite memories of uh, uh, donning that flag, wearing the the, the flag on your chest, what uh, what kind of sticks out for you when you look back at uh, your time with the Canadian men's team? I think just any time you, you walk out and, and you got to hear that national anthem and know you're playing for your country, it, it kind of just, it uh, it hits a little harder. It's uh, it's great. So uh, anytime I've 
I've really been able to put that jersey on. It's been a, a special feeling. And then the few times uh, having my my friends and family in the in the crowd as well it makes it makes it a little bit more special. Uh, we we're talking about growing the game here in Canada. It's kind of doing a good job on its own. A league like this helps it a lot. A guy like Alfonso Davies being kind of the best player, one of the, among the best players in Europe, that helps a lot uh, when it comes to growing the game. But what else can we do? What what else is out there in terms of making this game, specifically Canadian Premier League, but also, you know, just soccer. What can we be doing to make it more popular to, to get it out to the masses, I guess, uh, here in Canada? I think it's like just the, the fact that we've introduced this league, it's, I think it's doing a lot more than, than we all already know. I mean, just the fact that you got so, so many young kids who, who are seeing it week in and week out in their own backyard and they're starting to know the players and, and, and go out to each game every week. And then they kind of, they find that little, little community and they're supporting their teams and, and doing all that. It's, I think that has a massive effect on it. And then obviously, as you said, someone like Alfonso Davies and the career that he's having and the success he's had this year at, at Bayern is massive. And what that does for, for these kids, they're in their backyard, they're trying to be like him and they're getting his jersey and doing all that stuff. They're playing him on FIFA, all that. And that is massive. And, and to have a Canadian like that, it's it's huge because us growing up, it was it was hard, right? You didn't really yeah. you didn't really have that 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 kid you looked up to who was who was Canadian and you wanted to be like it was always oh I'm supporting Manchester United Arsenal whatever you're you're being the best player in the world which everyone's still going to want to be messy but to have such a talent that is is Canadian is is amazing I think we should all know his name uh what's what's it like being back I know uh, you guys have kind of been going through stages uh in terms of training uh you're doing more group stuff now uh talking to Bobby about this earlier but uh What's it like been training in a, in a world where, you know, nothing really seems to be normal being back on the pitch with the boys. That's going to feel a, a little, a little bit more normal. Yeah. I mean, the, the second we, we got back into the stadium, you could tell everyone was so much happier. It's, it's great. The morale goes up. No more of these, uh, these zoom workouts. You can throw those in the garbage. Yeah. And the <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just been fantastic. And obviously we, we all want to get back to, full training as, as quick as we can, just cause, cause we kind of see it. It's kind of like the, the carrots kind of yeah. dangling in front of us. And, and we just all want to get back to, to normal just cause it would just mean society as a whole is kind of coming back, which would be great. But it's, it's been fantastic. I mean, once we're on the field and everyone's playing, it's, you kind of get a little bit of normalcy back and the boys are just buzzing. I believe it. Uh, no more zoom workouts, but uh, I can't promise you no more zoom interviews because, uh, <laughs> There's a chance I might have you back uh, very soon. Buddy, it's uh, always great to see you. Thanks for doing this. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me.